All right, so far we've sketched out the structure of our user interface and the structure of our API. We have this basic UI that's built in semantic UI and uh, it displays a table and some filters. And then we have the structure of our API, which consists of one post route to create a stock. And we also have a home route, which actually renders a template as the response. And so the next step we're going to take is to um, create the structure of our database that will store all of our stock tickers. And for uh, database storage, we're going to be using SQLite so that we don't have to set up an entirely uh, an entire database server or, or anything. Uh, we just want a self-contained database uh, like SQLite because it lives right there on disk. And we're not going to have like millions of records in this. It's only going to be maybe a few thousand tops. And so this is perfect for our purposes and it's much easier to set up and get started. So um, if we go to the fast API documentation, and you click on tutorial user guide, you'll see if you type SQL, you'll see the section on relational databases. And we're going to use a SQLite as our relational database. And if you scroll down, um, it actually shows you how to configure SQL Alchemy, which is the object relational mapper that we're going to be using. Um, earlier in our requirements.txt, you'll notice we installed SQL Alchemy already. So make sure you've already installed that Python package. Now, uh, this is pretty much the same for all applications. There's, no, there's nothing uh, special about our database connection. So we can pretty much take this exact code and put it in our application. So this is create the SQL Alchemy, so import SQL Alchemy. Um, so I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call it database.py. And if you put this in, you'll see uh, we import the engine and a session and a base. And so a SQL Alchemy expects a, a URL that uh, tells it about how to connect to the database. So if we're using a database server like Postgres or MySQL, so this is commented out, um, you would need a username and password and a host name and a database name like that, but we don't need that. We just need a SQLite uh, URL format. So this is uh, a SQLite database, and then you tell it what the path to the database file. And so I'm gonna call this uh, stocks.db, so you'll type uh, stocks.db like that. And when SQL Alchemy creates this database, you'll see a file on the hard drive called stocks.db. And then this is pretty much the same everywhere. Um, you create an engine and a session and a base. And I'll show you what that is in a moment. But a session is essentially, um, it's like the intermediary for your connection to the database. Uh, you can add new objects and then commit, uh, commit records to the database and query the database using it and so forth. So now that we've defined our database connection, let's go ahead and define the structure of the tables that are going to be inside of our database. So we're gonna do this with SQL Alchemy models. And so we're gonna create some tables here. So if you scroll down further or search the page for table, you'll see uh, it shows you how to find SQL Alchemy model classes here. So I'm going to take this code here and then we're gonna modify this to fit the structure of our database and talk about what each of these parts mean. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna create a new file called models.py and this will store all of our database models. And if I paste this in, uh, you can see what's happening here. So we're importing uh, some data types from SQL Alchemy. So what our database table needs is uh, a bunch of columns and each of those columns have a certain type. And we're going to be storing mostly uh, some strings and some numeric data. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we don't need any database relationships because we're only gonna create one table. So we can delete these relationship lines. And from database, you see we're importing base. And so in database.py, we have a declarative base here. And so all of our models are, are extending the base model here. So um, we're going to have a table and we're gonna call the class stock and give it a table name of stocks. All right. And then we're just gonna define all of the columns in our database. So um, for a stock uh, table, we just need a table name and we're gonna have an ID. So this will just be a unique identifier, which will be our primary key. And so what that means is every time we insert a new stock record, um, it's gonna auto increment this ID and we'll have a unique way to reference uh, that one particular stock record automatically. And so let's go ahead and create some columns that we're going to need. And so we'll use uh, this structure here. So I'm going to comment these out for a second um, and we can just make sure we follow the, this pattern. So uh, what we're going to need for a stock, we're, we're going to want a stock symbol. And so that'll be a column and that's going to be a string. 
And then we're going to do use unique equals true because each stock is going to have its own unique symbol. And we can do index equals true. All right. And then we're going to just store, a, all we're really doing is storing a bunch of numeric attributes um, of each stock. So I'm going to import the type numeric. So I'll type numeric there. And uh, no, we're not storing any integers, so we can keep it like that. We don't need foreign key, and we don't need Booleans. So we only really need columns that are string and numeric. And so let's go ahead and define a bunch of columns. We're going to have price is a column, and that can be uh, numeric. And um, we define the number of decimal places we need. So um, the price is probably never going to be that high, but we're going to say we need um, 10 uh, numeric places in front of the decimal and then two afterwards. Okay, and then we're just going to make a bunch of these. And so we're just going to store a bunch of decimal numbers, uh, you may want to adjust this if we're doing a lot of calculations, a lot of people like to some people like to store these as integers in cents rather than using dollar currencies, um, just so it makes it easier to do multiplication and so and avoid floating point errors. Uh, but we're just going to for simplicity, we're just going to use uh, numerics here. So I'm going to use uh, price, um, we are going to need forward PE, and we're interested, we're not going to do every single statistic, we're just going to store um, a few key statistics uh, to prove our point. So we're going to do forward EPS, and we're going to do dividend yield, and we're going to also store the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. And we can update these over time. So um, yeah, so symbol and then some key statistics, and we're going to populate these from from a form and then populate the new numbers from Yahoo Finance. And so that's our table. Oh, we do need integer because it's used for the primary key. So I'll put that back. All right, one more thing, you'll see there's an issue with importing here. So um, it's not finding this base that's in database.py. What I need to do is add an init.py like this at the top level so that this is recognized as a Python package. And then I'm gonna delete that dot. So database is in the same um, folder as this models.py, so it should be able to find it now. And so now we have our stock model um, created already. So we have a table defined, and we also have um, a database connection defined. But we haven't actually created the database or created the table yet. We just have a structure defined. So how do we actually um, create the table? So we'll let SQL Alchemy do that. So we're going to go back to our main.py. And we're going to have it uh, import our SQL Alchemy connection and also have it create all of the tables that are defined. So um, let's go back to the fast API documentation. Um, so we're in the SQL databases uh, section. And if you search for create underscore all, you'll see this little line here where you tell SQL Alchemy to create all of the tables. So I'm going to get that line and I'm going to put this uh, at the top here. So models.base metadata create all. So we've, we extended the base model for all of the models that we created. And SQL Alchemy is aware of all the database models. And we also created the engine earlier. Um, so I need to import this stuff into uh, the main.py here. So we're going to uh, import, uh, we need to import the engine and we need to import models. So I'm going to do um, import models. And so that'll import uh, this from this models.py. And then I'm also going to import from SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to do uh, from SQL Alchemy um, dot ORM import session. So I'm going to import the session. And I also need to import the engine. So I'm going to do uh, from database because we're in database.py. Um, we're going to import uh, session local and engine. So it should know about engine now, and it should know about models, and it should be able to run that. And so you see uh, this server here is running all the time, and it automatically reloaded this code when I saved it. And you notice there's this stocks DV just appeared. Uh, so that dynamically got created. And now I'm going to go to my terminal real quick and see what's up with the stocks DB and, and explore it. So I have SQLite installed as a command line utility. So if you go to sqlite.org, um, you can download a command line utility and install it. There's probably another way to install it with brew. Install SQLite 3. Yeah, so there's a bunch of ways to install SQLite 3. There's probably even a, a UI browser for it. Um, so I just have a command line. And what we can do here is I can start up a terminal. And I'm going to go to that directory with our stock screener. 
And then if I type SQLite 3 and stocks.db, you'll see that I'm inside of that database now. And if I type dot schema, you can see I have the schema for a table. So that table's actually been created. And you see we have um, the ID, the symbol, and a bunch of numerics. And if I do select star from stocks, you can see there's nothing in there yet. I can technically insert one. Uh, so I can insert into stocks. If you know SQL, uh, you could just start inserting them directly. We're gonna build a form to do this for us, but I'm just gonna insert a record just to test it out. So I'm gonna insert into stocks and I'm gonna use the column symbol and I'm gonna do values, uh, let's say Apple stock, right? Star from stocks. And then you see we have one record and it got automatically assigned an ID and Apple is in our database, but there's no um, key statistics yet because we haven't got those. So we created a table and that's working. All right, I think that's a good amount of material for this video. We learned how to use SQL Alchemy in order to create a database connection and define a model. And we were able to create tables inside of a SQLite database and query it. So now that we have the structure of our database in place, uh, we're going to continue on in the next video and actually have our UI interact with the database. So stay tuned for the next video and thanks for watching.